The Atari GameStation Pro has only been in the hands of consumers for about 10 weeks, but already My Arcade has responded to our feedback of the product with a firmware update. Hey there, welcome back to Gen X Grown Up. I'm John and I am a Gen X Grown Up. Thank you so much for the click. And in this video, I'm gonna walk you through the three easy steps to update the firmware on your GameStation Pro. And then we'll take a quick look at the changes and improvements you can expect from this updated version of the software. Now, before we begin, I do want to alert you that this update will reset your device to factory default, erasing any game save states you have on the device. Now, if you'd like to preserve those, you can move save states to the SD card by loading them from slots one or two, and then resaving them to slots three or four, which live on the removable media and will not be affected. There are just three things you're gonna to have to provide here on your own. Your GameStation Pro console, of course, we'll need that, we'll get to that. Next, you'll need a USB-A to USB-C cable. Now, you can't use the one that was included with your GameStation Pro because that's power only. You need a cable that handles power and data. So just grab one you've got that works with your phone or with any other device that uses USB-C. As long as it transfers data, that's gonna be fine. And you will need a SIM tool or something comparable that has a thin, narrow probe we can use to depress the reset button on the back of the unit. Now, if you want, you could probably make do with just a paper clip if you don't have a SIM tool lying around, but something that allows you to get the work done of pushing in that button. Once you have all this material gathered and ready on your desk, it's time to grab the new firmware. I've included a direct link to the firmware update page on My Arcade's website down in the video description. So just click on over there, scroll down, and click on the download link. Then unpack the contents of your download to a convenient spot, like a folder on your desktop like I've done here. If this is your first time installing GameStation Pro firmware, and it probably is, you'll need to start by installing the driver. Open up the folder labeled Driver, and then double-click on Driver Install. If you get any pop-ups asking for permission, allow them, and then you'll be greeted with this simple installation interface. Click on the Install Driver button, and after a moment, you'll get confirmation. Click OK, and then close the Driver Assistant installer, and head back to your software folder. Now let's go into the Firmware Updater folder and double-click to launch Firmware Updater. Again, if you get any pop-ups asking for permissions, allow them, and you'll see this Arcade Dev Tool interface. Now here we'll need to select the correct files for each entry in the list, both the loader and the firmware. To do that, click on the small box to the right of the file name of the default loader, just below that ellipsis, which will open a file requester. Navigate to where you've unpacked that download and click into the firmware folder and choose the file named Loader, then open it. Now, similarly, click on the small box to the right of the file name of the default firmware, just below that ellipsis again, and you'll see another file requester. This time, select the file named Firmware and open that. Now we are ready to connect the GameStation Pro up to our PC. Now we're going to utilize this 5 volt in USB-C port. Normally that's just for charging the device, but in this case it's for firmware updates. Pay attention to this reset pinhole, we'll use that, as well as the power on button down here. So go ahead and plug the USB-C in. Now, if the unit comes on, turn it off. You want it off for this part of the upgrade process. Then you're gonna take your SIM tool or whatever you've got and insert it into this reset switch. Push lightly and you'll hear a little click. Hold it down. And while you're doing that, press the power on button. Listen for that happy connection sound over on your computer. And on the upgrade tool, you should see found one mask ROM device. That's the GSP telling you it's ready to go. Now the lights are not gonna come on during this process. That's to be expected, so don't worry about that. Let's move on. All the hard work is done. Now you just wanna click the run button in the Arcade Dev Tool interface and wait for a while. I'll speed it up here, but it'll be just a minute or two and progress percentage will steadily tick up until you see the message, download image okay. Now turn off the power on your GSP. You'll hear it disconnect from your PC. The Arcade Dev Tool will report no devices found because you turned it off and you're done. Time now to plug your GameStation Pro back into your TV and try it out. The original firmware on the launch run of units, what? Hmm? Oh, the hat? Well, I, I wasn't gonna mention it, but since you brought it up, I've got my Santa hat on to remind you that Christmas is right around the corner and our store over at genxgrownup.com slash merch has thousands of great nerdy designs you can get on t-shirts, stickers, pins, pillows, phone cases, magnets, and more. If you're stuck finding the perfect gift for the geek in your life, please consider checking out our store because every dollar spent not only delivers a cool gift, 
but also supports independent content creation, just like this video. Now, as I was saying, the original firmware on the launch run of GameStation Pro units was 1.20, visible here on the old About page. So let's fire up our newly updated GameStation Pro and verify we're now on 1.30. And here we are on the main menu. Now, right off the bat, the menu already is different compared to how it used to look. So let's pop down here into the settings and verify that we are in fact on 1.30. So we're going to the about, there we go, 1.30. Successfully updated, we're in good shape. I mean, we pretty much knew it because everything looks different. There's also a new fact section here, frequently asked questions, that looks very much like some of the stuff we covered in the video a few weeks ago about troubleshooting stuff on your GameStation Pro. So sure enough, it's now included and baked right into the menu back here on that main menu and something I'm going to point out that you can't see but you can hear you'll recall that initially the GameStation Pro was only putting out audio in the left channel but now if you want to listen to that rocking tune that's on the menu you can hear it in glorious stereo finally as well as all the games all the output from the GameStation Pro the next thing worth pointing out is simplified navigation. So everything navigates left to right and you can move up and down. You don't have to mash that B button every time you want to move up and down. So you can move down and start scrolling. But if you want to get to the top menu, just tap up and you can go across there and then come down into that menu. It's a subtle change, but eliminates that need to keep reaching for the B button whenever you want to change where you're navigating. So up and down, we'll just navigate purely up and down now. The solo scrolling takes place from left to right. The next really big key thing I want to point out is individual game information. I want to use Space Duel as an example. So I'm going to pop into Space Duel. Yeah, you'll see there's a new layout here, quite a bit of information. What used to be just you know, kind of a screenshot and the cabinet and this about section, now there's a control section. I had people mentioning in my videos, I can't get Space Duel to start. Well, it's because you need to use the two controllers select and start buttons in tandem. That's kind of how Space Duel works. So as you scroll, you can see there are some instructions on how you're going to use the controls, how you're going to use that joystick, what kind of uh, functions you need to do, how to get into the game, a shortcut, if you will, and that's included across the board. For example, back over here in the 2600, here's Adventure. The control section even lists like what do the difficulty switches do. So when you go in the menu to adjust the difficulty stuff, now you know what they do without having to go dig in the manual. Description of the game here, how you're going to operate it here, what all the switches do. This is a huge improvement over just good luck, I hope you know how the game works. Now it's not a full manual, of course, you can always go to Atari Age or Atari Mania for that, but it's much improved over just the fire and forget nature of dropping these ROMs with a screenshot and hoping we know how to play the games. Look, you and I probably do, but not everybody does, so nice addition here. And finally, the last major thing I'd like to point out here is the fix to vertical aspect ratio arcade games. Three by four games where that monitor was turned vertical in the cabinet were very stretched out. You can see here on the 1.2 firmware how Centipede looked. Well, back here on 1.3, let's fire up Centipede and take a look. Look at there. It's now the correct aspect ratio. So, and this is true for all vertical aspect arcade games. Now, I don't know how that's gonna impact those on the SD card. That's another story, but look, here's another example of my arcade hearing our complaints and our concerns and our observations and going, yeah, we can fix that for you. Next firmware update. Here we go. These are just the highlights as there've been several more small tweaks and improvements. But before I let you go, we were wondering how my arcade might handle all that SD card functionality we discovered in the initial firmware. Would it be disabled or maybe would it be embraced and improved? Now keep in mind, I've only had a few hours to spend with this new firmware so far, but already I've seen some changes that suggest that my arcade has not only embraced, but improved the behavior. First and foremost, getting to the SD card menu, you used to have to turn the device off and back on. Check this out. From the main menu, if I hold down home and start, look where I am. I'm in that menu. You might also notice, oh look, some subfolders, 2600 games. 5200 games, subfolder support, that is something we were asking for. And finally, this is the thing I was saving to show you. Check this out. What do we have here? <laughs> That's right. I've got Super Nintendo games now running on this. What other platforms might have been unlocked? Your guess is as good as mine, but I can't wait to find out. 
If you would be interested in a follow-up video exploring changes to how the SD card slot is used in firmware 1.30, sound off down in the comments, and if there's enough demand, I'll get it done. In the meantime, links over my shoulders here and here to other Atari Game Station Pro coverage we've done here on Gen X Grown Up. I certainly hope you found something to enjoy in this video, and I cannot wait to talk to you again next time. Bye-bye.